In 2019, the government of Ghana launched the Year of Return and opened its borders to the world. Accra has since seen an influx of black diaspora looking to connect with their roots, experience the culture, and ultimately network and invest. 2019 marks 400 years since the first slave from Africa set foot in America. President Akufuado has therefore declared 2019 as the year of return. Together on both sides of the Atlantic, we will work together to make sure that never again will we allow a handful of people with superior technology to walk into Africa, seize their people, and sell them into slavery. Big names like Kendrick Lamar, Meek Mill, Chance the Rapper, Steve Harvey. I think it's emotional for everybody. Every African American should experience it for their own soul. It's for your soul. You know, your soul is here. And most recently, the Vice President of the U.S., Kamala Harris, with her delegation including Cheryl Lee Ralph and Idris Elba, have also been in the capital to connect with their roots and weigh creative prospects, officially meeting the President of Ghana to discuss prospects of building a film studio in the country. And we have actually bring in a film, um, one of the soil, to our country and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. The news you bring is excellent news. I think this is an area where it would be very, very beneficial. There's a lot of value addition for our country. In the release of the trailer of his upcoming remake of Color Purple, Bliss the Ambassador had everyone talking with a tasteful incorporation of Ghanaian culture with rich kente cloth and graceful Adowa movements. One would wonder, why not a more vibrant creative industry? say, neighbouring Nollywood that are breaking barriers on a daily basis and steadily peaking in the entertainment scene worldwide, or Southside in Zanzi. Why Ghana? To get a better sense of where we are, let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? Dr. Kwame Nkrumah led Ghana to gain independence from colonial rule on the 6th of March 1957, thus making it the first country in Africa, south of the Sahara, to regain independence. The founder of the US-based National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and a friend to Nkrumah, W.E.B. Du Bois, moved to Accra in 1961, settling in the city's serene residential area of Laboni and living there until his death in August 1963. Mr. Du Bois' journey to Ghana may have signaled the emergence of a profound desire among Africans in the diaspora to retrace their roots and return to the continent. Not long after his move to Ghana, phenomenal woman writer Maya Angelou, along with several other young black activists and figures, settled in Ghana and formed a small expat community. Sadly, after the boy's demise, the community dissolved and Maya returned to the US and pursued her writing career. These timelines present a truckload of similarities which leads back to the heart of it all, investment in the creative scene. Will this be a reincarnation of the spirit of connecting with the black diaspora? Perhaps a subtle indication that a pan-Africanist movement of Kwame Nkrumah is still alive or just mere serendipity.